calling uh, Normandy get uh, Normandy getting out, getting really Normandy is being treated differently because they hired a lobbyist. How do I know this? Um, Normandy set up. Listen to this. The district agreed to pay ninety thousand uh, dollars to Andrew Blunt's firm for nine months, in addition to a maximum of forty thousand dollars on travel and legislative entertainment. They held a party, a meet and greet, if you will, uh, in which no one showed up. It was canceled. The school district, uh, let's see here. Um, it says here in Elisa Crouch's story in the post, stltoday.com, the dinner, as well as other meet and greet events for Normandy scheduled by the lobbying firm, was canceled. Um, and people are upset. Uh, can anyone from the Normandy School Board or superintendent can knock on the door and say, can we chat, said uh, this one elected official. Uh, his name is Mark Parkinson of St. Charles. Um, why do you need a lobbyist? So no one needs to give Mark Parkinson any money anymore from St. Charles because all you have to do is knock on his door and chat. That's good to know. So I don't... So. All these people who are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on lobbyists don't need lobbyists anymore? You know, here's the here's what they do. And I'm getting to the Tim Jones story in in a second. But but here's what they do. They they make you think the other side is stupid, right? The other side's not stupid. The other side knows how the game is played. Okay, so civic progress is 12 of the biggest, most powerful companies in the region. Do they have a lobbyist? Yes, they do. Why? Do you think these people waste their company's money? Absolutely not. These people know exactly what they're doing. These are captains of industry. These are the best and the brightest. Why do they spend money on lobbyists to, to, to go down to Jefferson City? Because they want things done. And they know the only way to get things done is to get the lobbyists and get in there and schmooze them and wine them and dine them and basketball tickets and football tickets and cardinal tickets and so on and so forth. These people are smart. Businesses on top of businesses. What do they do? They send people to Jefferson City. Rex Singfield, really, really smart billionaire. A brilliant billionaire, right? You don't become a billionaire unless you're really smart and you know how things are done. Does he knock on the door? No. Guess what he does? He sets up dummy corporations. He sets up he sets up lobbying firms. He sets up people to go down there to lobby what the man wants. So it's okay for civic progress and it's okay for Rex Singfield. But for Normandy, it's unacceptable. Yeah, I get the point that Normandy is a taxpayer-funded institution. So are universities, so are developers, so are developments, right? If you don't have a lobbyist down in Jefferson City, you don't stand a chance. And how do I know that? I know that because of this story. Tim Jones, who is the current, well, I know that the previous Speaker of the House, Steve Tilley, left. He was the Speaker of the House and left in the middle of his term to become a lobbyist. Think about that for a second. You are currently Speaker of the House, and he leaves to become a lobbyist. Think about that for a second. That's unbelievable. Tim Jones, who refuses to come on this show, will go on every other right-wing industrial complex uh, outlet in the region, and they'll uh, they'll throw him softballs. They'll throw him slow curveballs, and oh, 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 what a great guy. Oh, oh, great guy. Great. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, good to see you. Oh, great, great. Yeah, because he's doing the people's work. He's not doing the people's work, ladies and gentlemen. If he had, if he truly believed in what he was doing, he would come on this show and answer my questions. I asked him on this show numerous times. You know what he wants to do? He wants to sue me. The man... I got a letter from a constituent in which he admitted to me that he wrote, Tim Jones, Speaker of the House. In this letter to a constituent, the constituent was upset that he voted a certain way. He voted for a non-binding resolution. This wasn't any money. 
This didn't have any consequences of jobs or economic growth or health or anything like that. It was a non-binding resolution praising Lockheed Martin. Tim Jones, Speaker of the House, writes a letter to this constituent saying, hey, don't blame me. Blame the Boeing lobbyist. The Boeing lobbyist didn't tell me how to vote. So if you got a problem with it, blame your high-priced Boeing lobbyist. The Speaker of the House wrote that letter to a constituent. That constituent forwarded that letter to me. I called Tim Jones. Tim Jones admitted it was him. I said, great, come on the show and let's uh, discuss. Oh, I'm not going on the show. Are you going to read that letter? Yeah, I am. Well, how else can we get? That's the whole idea of the show. Well, I'm not coming on if you read that letter. That's a private letter. I was like, well, I have a copy of it. And then he proceeded to sue me and yell at me and scream at me and treat me like, um, how did he treat me? I don't even think he'd treat a farm animal the way he treated me. I mean, it, it, it was outrageous. It was pretty rude. It was it was beyond rude. Yeah, it was. It was unbelievable. It was. And 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 he did it six months later when I asked him to come on to the, the show again. So While he's trying to sue Mrs. Obama. While he's trying to sue Mrs. Obama for being born in Kenya. Or something along those lines, <laughs> which I didn't quite understand. But the point is this, is that here's a non-binding resolution, and he's he's being criticized for voting a certain way, and he says, don't blame me. Blame the lobbyist didn't tell me how to vote. And so now you want Normandy? Normandy needs $5 million, and they need $5 million because this legislative body wrote a law in which has sucked all the resources from Normandy. Now Normandy needs $5 million to finish out the school year. So why wouldn't they hire a lobbyist? Because besides, what are these elected officials going to do when they get term limited out? They need money. So they're going to become lobbyists. How do I know this? Look at K Street. Look at Kit Bond. Look at Dick Gephardt. This isn't a Democrat or a Republican issue. This is, this is a bought and paid for issue. Show me the green. Show me the cash money. Kit Bond, who I have a great amount of respect for, was just hired by the Missouri Chamber of Commerce to lobby to expand Obamacare in the state of Missouri. He voted against it as a senator. The Missouri Chamber of Commerce, the same Missouri Chamber of Commerce who hired Rick Perry, the governor of Texas, to come up here and steal Missouri jobs. Why? Because Rex Singfield wanted us to have a pa- to to uh, give a businesses a business tax cut, so it backfired on him. Why is that? Because Rex Singfield was lobbying these people. It's an embarrassment, and this all culminated. I, I, I'm, I'm officially exploding uh, because you're all upset because Normandy has the audacity to hire a lobbyist? <laughs> what about the audacity of the Missouri Chamber of Commerce to hire Kit Bond to lobby the elected officials to expand Medicaid? Where's the outrage there? Oh, he's just doing it for a payday. Okay, he's doing it for a payday. So he he really doesn't believe what he's lobbying, but I can just knock on your door. Why doesn't the Missouri Chamber of Commerce just knock on people's door? What do you need Kit Bond for? Steve Tilly, what, what do you need to be a lobbyist for? You were the Speaker of the House. <laughs> Why don't you just vote? <laughs> He was Speaker of the House and left to become a lobbyist. I applaud the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Uh, they keep this topic uh, going. They out the frauds. They follow the money. Elisa Crouch, congratulations. Kevin McDermott, congratulations. Two great stories over the last couple of days showing how fraudulent these people are. And the fact that they are now not showing up for a lobby paid for meet and greet with Normandy so they can hear Normandy's side of the story? What's wrong with Normandy's side of the story? You can't even hear what they have to say. You refuse to show up? You put them in this bind? They can't finish the school year and now you're ostracizing them for playing your game? 
you people raised the limits of how much money we can give you, unlimited, unlimited amounts of money we can give you, and the minute we try and give you money, now you're outraged? Oh, I can just knock on your door. Yeah, sure you can. Shh, I cannot. These people are the same people who say, hey, we shouldn't give anybody a free lunch, and yet we as taxpayers pay for their lunch per diems and then take free lunches from lobbyists. And yet they vote to make sure we don't get any free lunches. However, we're paying for their lunch and they're getting free lunches. Talk about peeing on the public dole. Holy mackerel. We'll come back, take a, take a couple phone calls, 938 KTR.